and welcome to the next edition of Atomic Ergo. I am your host, Earl Ray Neal, and we are privileged to have uh, with us today uh, our next guest, Leandris Whedon. How are you, Leandris? So happy to have you. Hey, I'm choosing to be great today, my friend. How are you, Earl? I'm doing the best, man. That That is a great answer. Um, we are super excited to uh, uh, to have you with us, Leandris. We, we're going to talk a little bit, folks, uh, today about lean construction. Um, Leandris has his BS from construction and construction management from Southern Illinois. Uh, also a, a civil engineering from Missouri University of Science and Technology and has his certification from the Lean Construction Institute, which uh, uh, the Ergonaut Nation is uh, really excited about hearing about that today. Uh, it, just a fascinating career history. Uh, he's currently the superintendent and lean advocate uh, for Layton Construction and is currently a core member uh, communications and outreach in the national community of practice, the Lean Construction Institute. So uh, really interested in uh, hearing what you have to say today. So I'll kick it off. And we'll talk a little bit about your uh, you know, extensive experience and your professional certification. It's obvious to me that you've been very successful in your career, uh, Leandris. Uh, you've got a, a wide range of experience from superintendent uh, to project engineer, uh, and then to a project manager. Um, is, is there somebody in your life that's uh, motivated you or sort of uh, guided you uh, down this career path? Yeah, I'll take that question, Earl. Uh, I'll say for me, uh, my passion for construction started when I was a very young child. I was about 12 years old. So uh, my grandfather and my father, uh, they ran a small um kind of a residential light commercial construction company in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, which is where I grew up at. But we uh, we used to do fire restoration jobs. We did a lot of fire restoration projects. So, you know, I learned uh, basically uh, was formally trained as a carpenter, uh, grew up doing everything from uh, going in from the floor joists all the way up to the roof and rebuilding everything in between, from, you know, finishing drywall, uh, hanging plumbing fixtures, glazing windows the old school way on the on the sawhorses with the, with the putty knife uh, doing flat work concrete shingle roof so we pretty much did it all and I knew uh, pretty much at a young age I wanted to get into construction industry uh, what capacity I wasn't quite sure I didn't think I wanted to work on my tool belts the rest of my life so I remember sitting on the porch one summer in St. Louis told my grandfather I said man I love this uh, you know working with my tools but I think I want to find a, a different way to make an impact in construction and so that's how I got uh interested in civil engineering and, and found construction management along the way. And then how did you get sort of steered into your lean construction practices, which uh, are obviously very important to you? Uh, I say that started back in about uh, 2014. I was uh, working for a contractor up in Cincinnati, Ohio, which uh, I'm pretty sure most folks are familiar, but Toyota is just right across the, the state line there. And so, uh, we were at a Cincinnati Children's um, Medical Center, uh, one of the top children's hospitals in the country. And when I got there, they were doing some things, uh, what they called um, almost like lean tools. We had these uh, daily huddle meetings that we would have every morning. We had these um, reverse phase planning um, meetings that we would do with the trades for different phases of the work. We had them doing our weekly work plans. And one thing I remember is people were saying like, oh, you know, this stuff comes from like Toyota way. And I was at the time, I never paid any attention. I was like, I don't know what Toyota has to do with construction, you know what I mean? But this is what we're doing here, so I'm going to do it. So I was there on that campus for a couple of years, and we were we would do these things. And I found that a lot of it uh, kind of helped us, especially with uh, coordination and collaboration with the trades as we were out there. And that was really my first exposure to anything that, that related to lean. And then a couple of years later, um, LCI has this uh, term that they uh, copyrighted called last planner system. People call it LPS in the commercial construction world. And I found out about that and started reading. I was like, a lot of this stuff we, we were doing back then, you know, so I kind of gravitated to it and was just uh, really been trying to figure out how I can apply a lot of those uh, lean methodologies to construction. And that was about uh, early 2019. So since then, I've been gradually uh, learning more about how we can apply these principles and concepts to commercial construction. So let's talk a little bit about um, lean construction, if you don't mind, uh, and do a little deeper dive for our listeners who might not be familiar uh, 
uh, with the term. So could you explain uh, sort of your approach to lean construction and, and how it differs from traditional construction methods and, and talk about the core principles that define lean construction? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and I say, I grew up in the construction industry, started in 2005, uh, right out of college. Uh, back then, the approach to construction was almost like a command and control. You know, the superintendent, general contractors were the folks that the prime contractors, they ran the job, kind of what you what you do says, and you just basically kind of tell people what to do, tell them where to be, and folks kind of operated on that on that premise. Um, there may have been some uh, uh, yelling of, of voices getting raised and, you know, people going back and forth about different things. Um, lane construction is really a different mindset. It's a different way of approaching it. Um, it's really all built around in, in the LCI world is uh, continuous improvement and respect for people. Um, so it's trying to bring back, you know, respect for the trades, uh, get people to collaborate. Um, I mean, we still have, you know, our CPM uh, Oracle P6 schedules, but we also, along with that, we also do what we call uh, phase pool plans to where you're getting the trades together and say, hey, we got two milestones for this set of work. Uh, we kind of know the demand based off the schedule. How can we get the people that are actually doing the work to get them some input, get some buy-in, and then start with a, a reverse phase scheduling, take that schedule, kind of balance the workout, uh, bring some 5S methodologies into, into construction, you know, where we're getting people to organize and, and group things together, uh, try to move away from just-in-case delivery to just-in-time delivery so we don't have a bunch of material on the job site cluttering things up. Um, this collaboration allows for people to get some buy-in to the what people call the schedule. I call it more like a production plan. You know, we got a schedule. Now, how are we going to meet that schedule? So lean is that mindset that to me um, establishes basically some flow on the job and kind of puts everything at a constant steady pace so we can actually start seeing where we can identify opportunities to get into the eight ways and teach people about the eight ways. And I even say that instead of the eight ways, because some people don't relate to that construction, let's call it the, the eight frustrations. You know, these eight things, if we don't do these things and remove these obstacles, they're going to be frustrations for everybody involved in the project. So let's start talking about these and start removing those. But it's really trying to bring some um, concepts from the other industries that have been utilizing lean uh, for years now and bring those things into commercial construction and say, you know, how can we stabilize our projects and then start to get that flow to where we're almost doing one piece flow type of work. And, you know, a lot of people say they believe in multitasking, but inevitably multitasking really makes things longer. So we want to be able to start work, complete work, finish as we go, instead of start work because the schedule says it and never finish any of it. And then you get everything stacked on top of each other the last three months of the job, which just makes for a hectic <laughs> run to the finish. So you, it sounds like you, you know, you've been through the training, you've put it, put it into, into everyday practice, obviously. Let, mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about what you see as the, as the future uh, for, for lean. So looking ahead, what, what do you think, uh, in the especially as it relates to the construction uh, industry, um, since that's where your your background is, what what do you see the future of integration of lean of the lean construction principles you know going forward? Yep. Uh, recently, here I was listening to a gentleman out west uh, named Todd Zabel. He wrote a book called Built to Fail, and really that book was was centered around um, why commercial construction, large capital projects, capital projects across the board have not had success in delivering the value that they said they were. So to me, I see uh, lean coming into play as something that can bring stability to these job sites. You know, you got to start with stability before you can ever see anything else. If you can't bring that stability to the job site, that's something I see lean bringing. Uh, like I said, bringing back respect for the people, focus, focusing on continuous improvement, building QA, QC in every step of the process, kind of like what Toyota did back in the day where they would take everything from design all the way out to the showroom floor. And there's a QA, QC process built into a construction. We like to build our QA, QC process into our punch list. Well, if you can build that into every step of your process going forward, the punch list is really more of an architectural touch-up list at that point, you know, because you got to be able to when you see a defect or you see something get built wrong, stop it immediately, correct it, figure out why it happened, 
and then figure out how we're not going to move, do that moving forward. So I see a lot of that lean methodology and thinking if you can bring that in construction, it's going to help us uh, deliver better projects, not only from a, a safety standpoint, because safety is one of the things that uh, every construction company is focused on. We want folks to go home the way they came or better, uh, along with the QAQC process. And then the fact that if we want to meet the 2030 and 2050 sustainability goals, there's about nine trillion on average per year, uh, you know, GDP that's got to be put into place in construction. That's a lot of work. So we need to figure out how we can do things more efficiently. Lean mindset is definitely one of those uh, tool sets that can come in. But at the end of the day, uh, the focus has to be on the people because the people are the ones building these projects. So I always tell people um, that people is always going to be greater than tools. So we got to get people to buy into what we're doing. Um, number one, number two, if people doesn't think it benefits them, you're always going to have resistance. So how do we relate to the people doing the work? And then how do we bring this lean mindset into it? And I, I feel that that is going to be a big advantage in commercial construction in years moving forward. People are resistant to, to change. That is yes. a, a fact. And I can tell based on, you know, just you talking about that you're passionate about lean construction practices. So obviously you're going to have to mar marry your obvious leadership skills, uh, along with those lean construction practices. So if, mm -hmm. if you care, talk a little bit about how you see leadership and lean construction practices uh, being tied together and, and how you plan to move your area of the industry forward. Okay. Uh, I, honestly, I think they go hand in hand. Uh, oftentimes, uh, people are, for one reason or another, uh, they get promoted to the next level. Uh, I call it being good at taking the test. You know, it's almost like saying you got a 12-year-old student who gets straight A's in algebra and now that they got straight A's that one semester they're qualified to go teach the class but are they really qualified to teach the class they don't have any formal education as a teacher they've never been taught to lead students the same thing happens in the construction industry and probably several other industries and I believe that's where leadership comes into play I think uh, Maxwell said it best you know leadership is, is influence nothing more nothing less you know and how do you influence people you got to be able to get that buy-in, but at the same time, you have to be able to lead yourself before you can lead others. And it's all about, you know, developing your character in those soft skill sets to be able to lead people. But at the same time, it has to be intentional. You know, it's not something that you can do and say, okay, I'm going to go take a two-day leadership course and now I'm a leader. It's something I have you a certificate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you you got to wake up every day and intentionally do something to develop yourself and, and my mindset towards it is um, I want to be a better version of who I was uh, yesterday, today, you know, and every day I wake up, I mean, I'm intentional. I, I want to read a book for 30 minutes a day, whether it's, you know, personal growth, whether it's leadership, whether it's some technical competency related to construction. I want to get uh, access to as many podcasts as I can listen to along those same lines. So I tell people that uh, you got to know the ledge because when you look at knowledge, it, it says, no ledge and really there is no ledge to the knowledge it's infinite amount out there people used to say that knowledge is power but i would say uh in response to that i would say knowledge isn't power i would say the power comes when you have the wisdom and the understanding to be able to use that knowledge so having the knowledge alone is not good enough you have to have the wisdom and the understanding to be able to use it and a lot of stuff like what i do uh, as it relates to like lean and leadership is if I'm reading something, I want to go out and try to apply it within 36 or 72 hours, whether it's with my family, whether it's with my friends or on a job site, you know, I'm going to go out and try it and see if this stuff works. And then if it doesn't work, I'm going to figure out, well, I'm not afraid to fail. You know, to me, failure is the first attempt at learning. But there's a, a guy who says, if you're going to fail, fail fast and learn iteratively. So just keep going at it, you know, and a lot of people aren't disciplined enough to do that. And I think, um, you know, leadership, lean, uh, discipline, all that comes together, and that's going to make you a, a better leader out here in the field. I can tell you I am better for this conversation. I really appreciate <laughs> your, uh, you're so insightful because, listen, in my other uh, job, so to speak, that I never talk about, uh, I see people every day that can take a test but can't do what it is that they, they were yep. supposed to be doing. So yes. uh, we understand you, you probably not to that point in your life just yet um, uh, because you're, you, you know, you're hitting your stride, so to speak, but uh, ever give any thought to what you want your legacy to be? Um, when I think of legacy, um, 
I was I was reading a book. I can't remember the name of it, but um, it, it puts me in the mindset of what do I want my eulogy to read when somebody's reading it. And so from that aspect, um, I want to be known as a person that was uh, a genuine individual that uh, was always striving to live a, a righteous life and someone who uh, made a mark on the industry and left the industry better than I found it. You know, I believe that there's a huge opportunity, especially in construction industry, to improve the way that we do things, not only from, you know, the way that we build, but the way that we treat people, um, the, making this industry more attractive to folks. I mean, really, the mindset to me should be, um, how do I make this particular project that I'm working on the best job that anybody's ever worked on? You know, whether it's, uh, you know, clean restroom facilities, get rid of Porta Johns and bringing out restroom trailers, whether it's a you know, a heated uh, and conditioned space to where the men and women can go take breaks. Whether it's, hey, we're going to have a supply of PPE, so if the people forget theirs at home, we can give it to them for free. You know, we're going to give people the power to to stop work here if they see unsafe things. But to me, it all goes back to discipline. You know, you got to have discipline to do these things. You have to have uh, courage to stop work when you see something that isn't right, whether it's unsafe, whether it's a defect, whether it's quality, stop it, correct it immediately and let people know that the culture of this project is, is may not be like other places that you've worked, but we're doing this for a reason because we want to build a culture of continuous improvement, respect for people, discipline. We're going to do the job that we said we're going to do for the client, but we want this to be the best place you ever work. So I think if you go into it knowing that and you're trying to do that every day and you're in the mindset of continuous improvement, then that, that's something that could happen. But the other thing is you have to be a lifelong learner. I've, I've come over the last several years to, to understand that what I thought I knew five years ago, I had no clue. So Way now to your mind. That, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now you got to go into this, uh, what I call the continuous cycle of, of learning, relearning and unlearning. And once you get to where you, you feel you've mastered it, you start back over because, um, Needless to say, a lot of people look at it as destination, but it's actually a lifelong journey. So that journey never ends. You know, time stops for no man or woman. So if you say, hey, you've mastered something, time continues. Well, you still have an opportunity to go back to where you started at and take what you have now and reapply that and see how can we get better at what we're doing. Well, I have a specific directive from our chief visionary officer, Steve Davis, to invite you to come and conduct a mission control on lean construction. And I see why uh, your enthusiasm for lean construction and, you know, just your approach is, is uh, amazing. It's contagious. And, and I appreciate you spending some time with us today. Uh, one of the things that we always do is give our guest uh, this platform to discuss briefly a a favorite charity that that you may have, uh, and, and if you feel comfortable doing that, we'll certainly put a link down below uh, uh, where the the podcast is published for folks to follow that and check out your charity. So, uh, do you do you have something in particular that you'd like to speak on today? Um, nothing in particular, but one that comes to mind that uh, I've kind of got involved with here in the last year, or so hadn't been able to spend as much time with it as uh, Ace Mentoring Program of America. It's one of those things that. If I would have knew about this in high school, I think it would have um, kind of uh, molded me a little better. But it, I mean, it's out there. It's in a lot of the major cities, but it allows uh, people that are in the design and construction industry to, to get involved with uh, high school students, and, you know, and basically show them that, hey, there's there's other opportunities out here besides being a professional athlete that you can go down that it, that is in construction and getting the youth exposed to the construction industry. Something like that, I feel, would be uh, very worthwhile you know, charity and uh, not-for-profit to get involved in because like everybody says, we, we need folks in the industry to, to help build the infrastructure of this country and really worldwide moving forward. But if you don't make it an attractive industry for people to come into, then that's kind of where we're going to have this gap. And I, and I hear people all the time say that, you know, hey, we, we have a, um, a manpower issue. And uh, I would challenge that to say that we actually have a, a culture issue. And that culture uh, to me is the culture of a company is like the character of an individual. It's, it's personal to the company, it's personal to the individual, but it's not private, everybody can see it. So we need to focus more on how do we build better cultures? How do we develop people's characters more that's gonna attract people to wanna come into this industry to work? And I think- yeah, just thank you for your time. 
I really, really appreciate it. it I'm, we are better for you. I, I can assure you of that. Uh, yeah, I, thanks for having me on here. And we'd love to have you back sometime too. Um, but uh, if you don't mind, we will certainly get up uh, with you about the, uh, the, the mission control. Folks, okay. that will wrap up this edition of Atomic Ergo. Uh, Leandris, again, thank you so much for your time and your insight. Uh, it's been fascinating. Uh, uh, folks, as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave those uh, in, down below. Uh, certainly, we always appreciate if you like and follow the uh, podcast. Uh, and don't be surprised if you get a responsive email back from our CVO or our COO uh, because uh, we're we're growing, but we're still small enough to where they pay attention to to, to what folks say on, on the uh, uh, on the comments. So again, thank you all very much. That'll wrap up this edition of Atomic Ergo, and I'd just like to remind you all to be good to each other. Thank you for your time, Lee Anderson. Take care. Thank you.